Okay, I can just put it in the pocket. Good to start. Um, hello, everyone. Um, I think it's uh, time to get started. Um, thanks for staying back for the almost last talk. I think there's lightning talks after this. Uh, my name is Kashyap Chamrati. I work um, as part of OpenStack Nova Engineering at the moment, but I began as a test engineer a few years ago at Red Hat. Um, today, um, I'll talk about how, what kind of debugging utilities lower layers of virtualization have to offer. Um, when you're trying to deploy OpenStack um, or when you're debugging an, an OpenStack setup. Um, so especially when you have multiple, um, in, in, in any non-trivial deployment, you have lots of um, um, compute nodes, thereby multiple compute, uh, multiple deliberate daemons and QMU instances and so on and so forth. So um, let's um, get started. <coughs> and then after that, we'll see a small real world example of, um, that ties together some of the things that we've discussed um, at the end. So, why? Um, as I mentioned, why this talk? Um, so, wh when, when, when you're debugging um, a large system like OpenStack, um, often um, virtualization drivers is where um, you may end up, um, not often, maybe sometimes you, um, you end up while um, debugging um, problems, say for instance, like migration, there could be um, N number of flows um, that's possible with live migration. So um, that's one of the complex areas where things can go wrong in a subtle manner. So to find relevant log patterns and um, could, could become complex and cumbersome when, when, when debugging this. So let's, let's see, what kind of bugs? Well, you're all well, well aware um, of plenty of different kinds of bugs that's possible. Um, crashes, things that occur only under a load. Um, I, I linked a bug there, and um, that's one of the notorious bugs that shows up um, in OpenStack Nova infrastructure, um, uh, their CI infrastructure only. Um, however much we tried to debug it independently, we just couldn't reproduce it. Um, uh, it's an interesting bug. If, 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 if you're uh, curious, you could take a look at it after uh, the talk or later sometime. Um, then, and OpenStack CI infrastructure runs about 800 test jobs per hour. Um, it's not a joke, it's real. Um, you can see the URL at the end um, that, that, that um, shows you what kinds of jobs it is running. <clears throat> so, um, briefly about Nova. Who knows about Nova here? Almost everybody. Okay, for, for the one or two uh, who, are, who are not um, familiar with it, um, it's essentially um, the compute part of OpenStack, which, which, which is responsible for uh, creating the disk image, um, calling the um, relevant virtualization driver, responding to calls uh, to, to, to monitor the state, and etc. cetera. So it, it, it supports multiple um, virtualization drivers, as you could guess. Um, KVM and QMU are the default open source drivers. And multiple other drivers are also maintained, like Xen and VMware, um, even LXE, and so forth. The, the config attribute you see there um, is, is part of Nova's um, uh, configuration file, where you specify the word type and a bunch of other libvirt specific configs. Quick tour of lib, um, KVM virtualization building blocks. Most people um, are very well aware of this here, um, but um, for those, again, who are not here, uh, who, who are not familiar with it, um, a quick um, idea. KVM, as, um, if you were at Mikhail's talk, he, he mentioned how do you enable KVM and, and um, how do you um, uh, in, do that in BIOS. Maybe not BIOS, but general ideas. Okay, it's a kernel module. Um, you have Intel's um, uh, VMX and AMD's um, SVM. Um, instruction that enable that allows you to perform hardware virtualization and QMU is um, a device emulator um, that allows almost 17 that 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 uh, emulates about 17 CPU architectures um, and and it does all the disks and network and display um, devices so if you want a complete PC like environment QMU is um, is the is the thing that is doing all the heavy lifting the two commands you see there um, they, um, they just, if, if you run them, it, it will enumerate what kinds of devices it emulates and supports. Um, 
And, and the second one, this dash CPU, it, it, it lists what kind of CPU um, QME emulates. And QME interacts with Liberate via the QMP JSON um, RPC protocol, so via socket. So um, it, when, you're, when, when Liberate is talking to QMU, um, it constructs QMP commands and, and talks to it over this um, JSON RPC interface. And Liberate, um, as, as, as you've seen in the previous sessions, um, is the hypervisor agnostic um, library that allows you to manage multiple um, different hypervisors. This is just a silly ASCII diagram that shows the same things that we've discussed a few minutes ago. <clears throat> okay, let's see um, a quick couple of things that, um, that, um, that are available in Nova, uh, utilities for um, debugging. And as we've, um, as I've mentioned um, a few minutes ago, when you kick off, when you request Nova to create an instance, so it gets a call, and it, it calls the API, and then the scheduler tries to place the instance among um, any of the uh, any number of compute nodes, um, and then the compute Nova compute process interacts with the um, Libbert virtualization driver, and that interacts with QM, uh, QMU via the QMP um, protocol. Feel free to interrupt me, but um, when I see people around here, most of them are very um, familiar faces that I see who are deeply involved in virtualization. So maybe I'm preaching to the choir here. <coughs> so Nova Compute, um, like any m m uh, large project that you expect, um, it has these default flags that you can set in its configuration file that allow you to um, examine a bit more detailed um, um, flow of requests and track down where the issues are. Um, and Nova also has this uh, thing called Guru Meditation Error Reports that, that um, I'll discuss in a, in a minute. Followed by that, um, Libert has a few um, very um, detailed uh, utilities that will let you examine a request in a very granular fashion. And the Libert lock filters is one. Um, that, that will let you do that. We will, we will discuss that also in a few minutes. And the um, Libert Shell Wrapper Versh tool as well. Followed by that, um, for QMU, um, the QMP commands and, the, and HMP commands are um, two of the things that you can use to query, live query, or modify um, a guest state. But um, modifying the guest state behind Libert or the higher management layers back um, is really frowned upon because um, it's, it, it voids your support um, warranty. <clears throat> when, when debugging, I, I, I personally do use the QMP commands because Libert um, um, uses the QMP interface, so I just make my eyes tuned to looking at the um, JSON blobs of um, um, QMP commands. And KVM, um, well, th this talk is mostly about Libert and QMU, um, but for KVM, there's a, a talk link that I, uh, and, um, uh, that I uh, have at the end in the references, so that, that could be, um, that's a very nice talk um, if you want to dig a bit more deeper. So this is a bit out of scope for this talk. So yeah, Guru Meditation Report, uh, until um, this um, was available, there was no way to get a proper error report um, to, uh, if you want to, um, kill a pro Nova process and see, uh, get state of a live um, Nova process like the API process or, or the compute process. So, <clears throat> one moment. <clears throat> Within, uh, with the uh, introduction of this Guru Meditation Report, um, you can now supply a user-defined signal, either USR1 or SIGUSR2, and, and give a process and so, you can, so that um, it can um, uh, to the kill command, and then it will Im immediately generate um, a large report um, that, that can be examined. Um, Good question. The question is, and is this signal specific, is this, um, um, error report mechanism specific to Nova or other components. In, it is currently wired up in Nova. 
there is, a, uh, there is work in progress to enable that in other um, projects as well, but I'm not tracking those efforts, so probably they're, they're already, some of them might have already been merged. So we can check that in, in, in the, from the Git. So earlier the signal used to be SIGUSR1, but it turned out that some of the, um, some Apache process um, reserved the SIGUSR1 signal, so we had to um, change the default signal to SIGUSR2. So from the next um, upstream um, OpenStack release onwards, the, the signal to use is the USR2. So yeah, that's just a brief um, um, rundown of what kinds of um, things that you see in the error report um, of, of Guru Meditation. There's a, there's a link at the bottom that you can refer to um, that shows um, what kinds of things that it enumerates. The most useful thing is um, the configuration detail. Um, sometimes people when report bugs or, or, or if you're using a downstream product when customer reports bugs, they say they've enabled so and so thing, but it, oftentimes it turns out um, they didn't. So um, just so that um, you can get, um, uh, to eliminate that um, uh, bottleneck, you can get the configuration details now when you um, generate this um, an error report framework. By the way, if you're wondering about the guru meditation quote, um, the, the phrase, it's um, apparently um, um, for old Commodore machines when they crashed that they used, they used to generate such an error mes uh, message. Um, so it's an origin from there. Um, this was written by, this guru meditation report framework in Nova is written by my colleague Daniel Beranche. Uh, <coughs> And, and, and the nice thing about this is uh, you don't need to have, um, you don't need to set up anything or configure anything um, to, to, to trigger this. So it's, it's no, no action is necessary from the operator. So um, let's see what, what kinds of debugging controls that um, Libert and QMU offers. Most often, the first thing that you have to look at is the uh, virtual machine uh, specific logs that are located um, in Verilog, Libert, slash, and QMU followed by the um, instance uh, name, instance log, uh, and that contains mostly the libert and generated um, QMU command line followed by the error messages from QMU. Um, so that's a useful place to look at if you suspect there is any QMU issue when you're, when you're debugging um, um, from a higher management layer. So from then on, you might get further clues by um, enabling log filters and so on. And Libert's um, standard error stream is also redirected um, to the log file. Yes, and I, a few minutes ago I mentioned about the Libert log filters. So uh, log fil um, that's, that allows you to um, uh, uh, that, that allows you to examine the Libert log file at a more granular fashion. So three main things that Libert um, thing, uh, Libert has is log messages, log um, filters, and um, uh, log outputs. So filters is just essentially a set of patterns um, and priorities that you tell um, the um, deliberate daemon to log. For instance, if you want to capture only things related to um, QMU driver, you can specify, hey, please only capture um, uh, uh, debug priority for the QMU driver and error slash warning messages for the rest of them all. So that's, that's just, um, uh, uh, that's how you enable it. Um, in, you supply these config variables in Libert's, um, uh, Libert daemon's config file, and you um, start, re restart the Libert daemon, followed by um, triggering a test uh, from the beginning so you can see um, what's going on. That's for daemon logging. You could also examine what kinds of public API calls that Libert is issuing by um, uh, setting some environment variables um, uh, on, on the command line. And you could see a few um, environment variables listed there. You could redirect the output either to um, a, a specific log file or to the system D journal. Um, either of them would be uh, fine. And, or you could set to both of them as well. <clears throat> And this applies also for the um, liberal uh, daemon as well. So, <clears throat> yes, um, 
for when you use systemd journal, it has very nice structured fields that, that will allow you to examine what function um, the error is coming from, what code line, what, what error code, and um, what kind of, what, uh, which source file. Um, very granular detail um, you'll get when, when you um, use the journal CTL to query. Yeah, Th these are just a couple of examples that you supply to the journal CTL tool. You say, journal CTL, please um, um, enumerate all priority, the last command, for instance, if you see, please enumerate all uh, error priority messages um, for liver daemon since today. So that's very convenient um, and uh, a useful tool in the toolbox. Two other very interesting commands um, that, um, that, um, that QME allows and that you could um, run via Liberate are the QME monitor command and QME monitor event. So QME monitor command that will just allow you to pass through any Q QMP command um, that, that you can run um, via this uh, invocation so that you can inspect um, the live state of a, of a VM or um, modified if you're in a very um, deep debugging um, environment. But oftentimes m you just want to inspect um, a, a state of a VM. We'll see a few commands um, um, next, what kinds of things are available. And there are a lot more utilities that Libvirt offers that you can check out in the manual page of um, Libvirt. Yeah, um, so if you run um, a QME monitor command this way, you just apply the VM name followed by um, a flag pretty that will just print the JSON output in a, in a readable fashion and you say please execute the query commands command that will enumerate all possible um, QMP commands that um, QMU offers and you can run via Libvirt. So when you run that, you see something like uh, an output like this but um, I just tr trimmed off a, a lot of output. There are about 170 or 160 commands. So um, one of the commands that I highlighted there is the um, drive mirror command um, that, that we'll get back, that's, which is used for storage, live storage migration. Um, we'll get to this. <coughs> Sorry. Another um, command that, um, that's useful is, um, not useful, that's just an example. Um, to query, um, it's also useful, to query live block, uh, <laughs> block information of a, of a VM. So if you run this query block, it will show uh, all block device information of a, of a uh, disk image of a VM. Um, so if there is a um, backing file, most often all OpenStack instances, Nova instances, will have a backing file. So you'll see information about the backing file, the virtual sizes, and, and, and some of the IO ops related information. Um, and so on. I trimmed off a lot of output, but um, if, if you're debugging anything related to block layer or just wanted to um, see what kind of um, uh, detail that's going on under the hood, you could invoke this one. So the monitor event command, um, it, it w um, you can see uh, various kinds of events. For instance, if you're performing a live block operation, like a, a disk copy or um, live migration, um, live storage migration, you can see, you can enumerate, you can invoke this command, and then um, parallelly, um, while the disk copy or live migration, is, live migration is going on, you can see the um, events um, that on, on your shell where you invoked the QME monitor event. You have to run it in a loop so that as long as the command is running on the other shell, you can see uh, the um, ev events that are in progress. And you can observe all kinds of arbitrary event, QMP events that you can see what kinds of events are possible by running the QME monitor command followed by query events so it will enumerate all events that are possible. So um, enough of rambling about what, are, what kinds of t tools are available. Let's see a small example um, of how do you trace the flow of a guest crash um, uh, during live block migration. 
Um, I was, when I was trying to prepare this um, presentation, I encountered this bug, so I thought, why not uh, use this um, as an example for this? So first, why this example? Um, like um, I mentioned at the beginning, um, when you were doing any non-trivial um, deployment, you have, mul you have to interact with multiple um, compute nodes and multiple liver daemons. <clears throat> so this is a nice example where um, a live block migration is happening, um, which means along with the guest state and the device state and um, memory state, you are also copying the disks to the destination. So that's, um, that's what's happening when you say block migration. And you can examine what kinds of commands Liberty is constructing to send to um, QME. Liberty is asking QME to construct and send them to the destination daemon. So this is a nice example um, if you want to see the flows between source and destination um, Liberty and QME instances. So when you want to perform a live block migration from Nova, you just say Nova live block migrate followed by the block migrate flag and you specify the instance name and the destination. Once you do that, uh, there are a bunch of flags that Nova sets um, uh, to configure the block migration and it performs it. By the way, as a, a small uh, digression, these flags will now be um, deprecated in Nova, but it will retain uh, the functionality just so that it's confusing for users and operators to set up all these flags. So um, it's just um, easier to uh, eliminate this and then do um, so the right thing by, by, default, by default with a tri-state flag <coughs> that will handle um, various uh, configs with, with a single configuration. So up until now, you have to explicitly set them. There are some default flags, but you can set something specific based on what kinds of things you're doing. Like if you want encrypted uh, tunneling, there is a specific flag for that. Um, so yeah, that's, um, that's in, in brief. That, that's what happens when you trigger the live migrate command. And if you want to see what's happening underneath, a good way is to um, use the libvirt shell interface and um, supply the same flags that Nova is asking Libvirt to construct. Um, so that's what you see. You say Versh is the shell interface of Libvirt. Say migrate followed by the verbose flag and um, incremental storage flag. That means a base image is shared, same base image is shared between source and destination, followed by a peer-to-peer -peer flag, which implies um, the source Libvirt daemon will control the complete migration flag. Um, if I'm wrong, please correct me, Mikhail. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, so. You are running the migration command instead of Nova Compute? Inst what is that? Can you, you repeat that? You are running the command instead of Nova Compute? So you're actually uh, duplicating what, what Nova Compute Yeah, this is just to see what Nova, if you run the, uh, the, the Nova Live Migrate, um, I didn't show the Nova logs, um, Nova specific log when you invoke this. This is just a way to enumerate what um, you can run with libvirt instead of Nova. Yes, yes, yes. In Nova logs, you can see uh, what calls are being done. Uh, it, if you see, it's just the same interface. It is using the same APIs um, that uh, Nova is calling. So it's, it's calling the equivalent Python bindings, though. So um, the libvirt Python project is what used. And the specific API is the migrate to URI API that you see at the bottom. <coughs> so that's, that's in short. Um, yes, and, and when you do that, um, and the word standard error stream says, and guest unexpectedly quit. That doesn't give us much information what's going on. So let's see further what else we can do. We can examine the libvirt daemon log and see um, what else is available. There is an error message that says um, internal error and end of file from monitor, which again doesn't inform much um, if, if, if we are coming from higher level management project like Overt or, or, or OpenStack and some other projects like that. If you scroll further down, you will see um, a bit more verbose um, error message that says VM1 closed without shutdown event and I'm assuming the domain has crashed. But you don't know whether it really crashed or not. But if it, if it assumes, we are not certain if the assumption is true or not. So let's see if we can confirm the assumption. 
Um, as I've mentioned um, a few minutes ago, the, the virtual machine specific or the Nova instance specific um, log is located in, in the um, barrel log liberty QME directory. There you could see a cryptic message that says um, uh, coroutine and re-enter it recursively. Again, that really doesn't say much either. Um, so let's see, um, and then the guess is shutting down there, you could see. So let's see how much further we can drill down. Because um, it get, a little bit said guest crashed, um, we could examine if there are any uh, cordoms available. So we could use a journal, uh, systemd journal um, tool like cordom CTL to see if there are any um, cordoms present. We could see that indeed there is a cordom available for QMU process. So here we confirm the Libvirt assumption. If you have all the necessary debug packages and um, uh, all relevant um, dependencies involved, you'll get a nice core um, that you can dump via the core dump CTL command so that you can extract uh, contents like stack trace from it. So if you're providing um, a bug report to a lower layer project like QMU or Libvirt, so this is um, one way to go where you can provide as much detail as you can. And you can also see the um, uh, segue signal, which is a segmentation fault that um, the Cordom CTL outlines clearly. So at this point, we know that uh, the, the bug lies in QMU. So, and we could report that, this detail to, um, in a bug, and which is quite informative. You don't really have to. Um, uh, uh, do anything more because it's more or, more or less self-contained um, bug report with this level of detail uh, which a QMU developer should be able to act. And the said QMU developer is sitting right there who fixed it, um, <laughs> Kevin Wolf, <laughs> uh, who, who, who it, it, this turned out to be a bug in a QMU's uh, disk mirroring code. Um, so Um, I, when I filed the bug, I was looking through the Git um, uh, source code to, to see the relevant error messages, um, if, if there is any hints for that. So when I was looking at... Um, sorry? Well, yeah, good question. There is no ABR. Is there any ABRT integration? ABRT is automatic bug report tracking tool to those who have, haven't heard. Um, well, there is, but, but I didn't enable it on my system, so probably didn't, I didn't automatically report. So um, I filed that bug. <clears throat> but yes, um, I, I, didn't, I don't trust as much the ABRT report. Maybe I should. This will be recorded, so. <laughs> Sorry? Often? Yeah, OK. So yeah, um, so that's that's one um, small example that um, outlines that tools and utilities that we could use to track down bug. It's not really necessary if you're working at a certain management layer to dig dig down. Um, we could if you could file the bug to the respective component, the respective um, engineers might track it down. But it's always nice to dig down uh, deeper and then try to find out the root cause um, as much as we can. So that was the failure case. In a successful case, um, to understand what's going on behind the scenes, you could um, grab through the Libvirt daemon log to see um, what kinds of commands Libvirt is asking QMU to construct. So you could see um, the drive mirror command. If you were paying attention a few minutes ago, um, uh, we've seen um, the drive mirror command when we enumerated a um, list of commands that via the QMU monitor command. Um, the, this is where you could see the invocation that um, source libvirt daemon uses um, to talk to the destination where there's an NBD, uh, a network block device server running, which is taking all the um, data that's sent from source libvirt daemon. So this is on the source um, um, host that I grabbed for. Likewise, you can do that on the destination and see what's going on there. So um, a few references that um, I said at the end. Last year at KVM Forum, there's a nice talk by David Hildenbrand on, on uh, guest operating system debugging um, that goes into much more detail about uh, using GDB 
um, and, and, and more uh, lower layer uh, debugging. And there's another one by Stefan Hanasi, um, also last year FOSDEM on uh, observability in KVM. So um, it, it's also a very nice talk. So if you're interested in digging there, you can check that out. Yes, um, last, um, a few days ago I was at FOSDEM and um, I, I attended a talk. Um, some of my uh, a colleague referred, said you should uh, check out the talk uh, called Hunting the Bug from Hell. Um, where Andrew Halley, a free Java developer, um, said something very interesting where he, detail, where, where he outlined the most complex bug he has um, ever fixed. Um, and and he, um, set the, uh, he set the stage by describing the problem statement and then uh, giving some hints um, as to if anyone in the audience can, can guess it. Very well engaged talk, um, maybe unlike this. <laughs> um, his essential point at the summary was, um, a lot of us spend time um, debugging and not much is written or um, shared about it. Um, so I thought it was a very uh, well set point. So there we are. Um, that's all I've got. If there is any questions, there are any questions. But I don't know, most of them are experts here <laughs> who are sitting. <laughs> All right, there are no questions, and uh, thank you. <laughs>